Hi, my name is Aoife Fitzpatrick and I am thrilled because my debut novel called The Red Bird Sings is on this year's shortlist for the Kate O'Brien Award. And thank you so much to everyone at Limerick Literary Festival and to everyone involved in the award. Um, I'm really not kidding when I say that Kate was very important to me in the writing of this novel. There she is, The Red Bird Sings, which is published by Virago Press. You can see the uh, little apple on the spine there, which means that I also kind of thrillingly share a publisher with Kate O'Brien. But the, the piece that was very important to me was on my desk at all times when I was writing the book as a piece of nonfiction um, about Teresa of Avila. So O'Brien wrote a biography about the, many will know that she's a mystic from 16th century Spain who lived very much outside the cultural limitations that would have been placed on her at the time, which is something I think that she shares in common with the Bell O'Brien. They make a terrific pair and they were both, yeah, very inspirational when I was um, uh, writing the book. I'm very happy also to be nominated alongside the terrific Catherine O'Donnell and the amazing Anne Tiernan, both of his books I'm really enjoying at the moment and I urge, urge everyone, please, please check them out and come to the bell table on the afternoon of Sunday, 25th of February, because that's when we're going to be talking more, in more detail about all of the work that is on the shortlist. To tell you more about the Red Bird Sings, I must talk about the real life murder trial uh, the events of which the novel is based on. In 1897, in West Virginia, a man named Trouchu went on trial for the murder of his young wife, whose name was Sona Heaster. And the very exceptional circumstance surrounding this case is that the victim's mother, whose name is Mary Jane Heaster, claimed that she was visited by her daughter's ghost, who told her that it was her husband who had murdered her, Trouchu. Um, when I first heard the story, I thought it sounds, it sounds like fiction or it sounds like folklore, but it's real, like it's true. It's something that really happened. And it re began to gnaw at me about why or how Mary Jane could have found herself making these claims about her daughter's spirit. And especially in this context, you know, the, the legal context. What it also opened up was gateways to the larger cultural landscape of issues around domestic violence and domestic homicide. And what that really boils down to in the novel is a discussion of the extraordinary things that can happen, that I believe did happen when the big forces of female voice and female power are choked off. And although there is a greater cultural landscape associated with the novel, really this problem expresses itself in individual lives. And the people that you'll meet in the novel are Mary Jane Heaster, who I think it's fair to say is a very unconventional spiritualist who has a lot of private power, but really has no, no public power whatsoever. You'll also meet Lucy Fry, who is Zona's best friend and who's feeling maybe a measure of guilt, thinking that she didn't help Zona enough when she was alive with the problems that she suspected she was having with Trout. And partly because she's an aspiring journalist, she's looking beneath the surface of the trial, really searching for some deeper truth there when it seems that, um, you know, a lot of the county is aligned against her and Mary Jane in their search for justice. You will also meet Zona, who is the murdered woman. In part, this is through a series of letters that she's writing to the child that she gave up for adoption at birth, which is a part of Zona's true story. About two years before she died, she did give up a baby. Um, so she's writing letters to this child in the hope of meeting her again one day. And the letters are going to be put aside for this child, Elizabeth, for when she is older. And what I'm going to read to you now is an excerpt from the first letter that we see that Zona has written to this child. So Zona's first letter in the book is dated August 23rd, 1896, written in Meadow Bluff, West Virginia. My dear Elizabeth, where to start? I've never done this before and neither have you. It's one of those things you can only risk once in a lifetime and maybe there's no right way, so here goes. 
I'm your mother, Zona, the one who carried you for nine whole months before you arrived screaming into the Meadow Bluff Dawn. Today is your first birthday, but if you're reading this already, the years have passed and you are 16 years old. My friend, Lucy Fry, is taking down my words, being better on her Remington than I will ever be with pen and ink. She'll keep my letters in store for you, Elizabeth, because I might get too nervous to send them when you're grown. That would be like me. You've no doubt become a fine young woman of great accomplishment, a Virginian wearing the fashions of the 20th century. And strange to say that if you open this letter in 1911, I won't be too much younger than your grandma, Mary Jane. Right now, I'm a score and four. And when I last saw you, you were smaller than I thought a human being could be. Moments into your life, gumming the air like all creatures do when they are fresh from the darkness. Do you still have the name I gave you when you were born? Elizabeth. Have you been well and happy in the way that mothers dream of? I owe you this letter now that you're grown because there must be at least one thing you want to ask me. Why did I give you up? Well, if you're ready for the answer, I will set it down. Okay, from The Red Bird Sings, and join us at the bell table in Limerick on February 25th.